Victoria, I've been trying to call you all day. Oh, <laughs> I was messing with you, man. I, I, I love it. My man is eating raw meat. The hell? Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me. Go down as a legend in my city, cause we beat the streets. Trying to spread the wealth around the block, no, I can't keep from me. Told me I should leave. I see the bigger picture, and it's way bigger than me. Can't be living like a king, but my people need to eat. If I got it, then you got it. We gon' get back on our feet, and I put it on me. Woo! What is going on, Real Squad? And welcome back to the Real Flicks channel. And this is a reaction video to SpongeBob Conspiracy Number 8. The time traveling ghost pirate theory. Guys, I hope you grabbed your popcorn. You're good to go because this is going to be a lengthy reaction. This is about 35 minutes. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. I'm pretty sure you knew because this is my first time ever reacting to Alex Bale. I've watched all his his uh theories before in the past. I just never decided to bring it to the channel. And I saw that he just dropped number eight. So if you want to see me react to his older theories, which I haven't seen them since he released them, so I pretty much forgot all of them but if you want to see me react to those please let me know down below leave a like and we're gonna not, we're not gonna waste any time because we're gonna be here for a minute 35 minutes of just you and me me and you and alex bell's crazy conspiracy theory let's get into this shall we yeah, i'm being serious just make sure you leave a like and, and most importantly subscribe it it doesn't cost you anything and it means the world to me just go ahead and subscribe to the channel thank you this is gonna be good. The Flying Dutchman is the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. Please connect this. Absolutely no sense. They look different, they act different, and most uh -huh. importantly, Patchy the Pirate is alive at the same time we see the Flying Dutchman. Right. It would be impossible to prove that they're the same person, right? No. Well, you know, I like a challenge. Yeah. This is the time traveling ghost pirate. Yeah. Please connect this. His his theories are crazy and they make so much sense. So much sense. Oh, that's yo. How do you know about that? That's right. I remember. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna pause too much, but I remember in the last uh, conspiracy he did, his friend, this girl, I forgot her name. She has a tentacle monster too in her closet. I don't know what story she over to telling on her channel. It damn sure ain't SpongeBob. But Alex Bell, if you're watching this, hey man, don't even worry about all them negative ass people talking trash about. Yo, film bits, whatever. Man, you you have a talent, my guy. You have a talent. They go to hell. Everybody that's being negative can kiss your ass. You are doing an amazing job, man. Thank you for bringing these videos in addition with your filming videos to us, man. Great job, man. Keep it up. Keep your head up, man. You're doing wonderfully. I have one, too. What? Yeah, he was shook on that one. <laughs> They're about to have a so cup, cup of coffee and talk about it. Have a muse. You mean you also have a creepy monster thing in your basement giving you SpongeBob theories? Well, not SpongeBob. No, it didn't give me SpongeBob theories. Yes. It got me my commercial jobs. I didn't even know there was more than one. I have like a thousand questions right now. Like, what exactly are they? Where do they come well, from? Obviously, they she's are? a veteran in this. Um, I probably don't know that much more than you. <clears throat> Mine just showed up in my house one day and eventually it left. You just chill with it? Wait, left? Yours left? As in you don't? No, I just kept giving my muse. It got me a permanent job, and then it left. So. Listen, I know they seem really weird and creepy at first, but honestly, they're just here to help. How didn't you have to feed yours like? She's a little too chill with this. No, what have you been feeding yours? Mine ate a cat. Hang on, you gave your muse a whole cat? cat. I didn't feed it the cat. Okay. It was in my home, and then it, it took it, okay? It wasn't my fault. Okay, well, obviously you don't have a cat in your home when you have a muse. Listen, just keep giving it meat, and eventually it'll leave you with enough Spongebob theories to last you for years. Years? That's, that's pretty... I don't know. How many theories could he possibly make with Spongebob, though? Is it really that many to last him some years? I really can't think of any other theories he could come up with. But then again, I didn't think he'd come up with eight. So, obviously, he's doing something. I've been thinking about things, and uh, I'm willing to... And he got a SpongeBob shirt on, or a sweater on. But things have to be very different this time. No more eating living animals and to stick to the store-bought meat, okay? Uh, no. That's not gonna happen. Not if you still want these theories, my boy! 
We still want these theories. I want live meat. Okay. Uh, great. Glad we're on the same page. He did. He, no, I'm, I'm sorry about all the shouting and the craziness. You know, I won't have anything against you personally. I think what the hell is that? Alex, you better turn your ass around. Hell no. Nah. Nudged him on his neck and then skedaddled? You tri- Yeah, no. I, oh, oh. Alex, I love your tie-in. Love your tie-in with this. Because did he implant you with something? Yes. These videos have uh, definitely changed my life. Yeah. The tragedy of Patchy the Pirate. Before I get into how these characters connect, I have to explain the tragic backstory of Patchy the Pirate. I'm Patchy the Pirate, president of the SpongeBob SquarePants Fan Club. Patchy oh, okay. The, is the president of the SpongeBob Fan Club, and they often cut to him during special episodes to host the show and talk to the audience. Right. He fits in perfectly with my television duty. And clearly works for the in-universe SpongeBob square. Yeah. Show, some kind of mascot for the show. Boring. Well, I forgot that damn parrot. Patchy is this weird, lonely guy whose only friend is a talking parrot who's constantly harassing him. <laughs> I'm also pretty sure Patchy wants to eat him. Shiver me timbers, it's potty. <laughs> I wonder what parrot tastes like. But that's not what the series. Is. Yeah. Right. 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 Watch all the episodes of Patchy. Here we go. Here we go. He has devoted his entire life to SpongeBob. Right. That devotion is very one-sided. And the more time that goes on, the more resentful Patchy becomes of SpongeBob. In the season three episode, Party Pooper Pants, Patchy throws a house party and tries to invite SpongeBob, but he doesn't show up. Yeah. You didn't bring SpongeBob with you, did you? Gee, I sure hope he got his invitation. I'd sure like to go to this party, but I can't read the invitation. Did he mess it up on purpose? Right. Ah, well, but then things start to take a turn in the episode The Sponge Who Could Fly. Patchy follows a map and goes on a crazy adventure to find the legendary Lost SpongeBob episode. And after five I remember that. I remember that episode. I remember this episode, y'all. Crazy, man. That's the last episode? Yep. That was just a bunch of cheap walk cycles. So, Patchy got let down by SpongeBob again. Oh, he eventually started hating him. Uh oh. Oh. Patchy has a full on mental. Whoa. I don't remember seeing this. But this is just the start of Patchy's transformation into a much darker character. Okay. Season six episode, Truth or Square. Crazy. Patchy throws a massive television extravaganza to celebrate ten years of SpongeBob. There is a ton of production value and celebrities that Patchy managed to get. There is he had uh Robin Williams in there. R.I.P. What do you mean he's not coming? Oh. No. Nope. Never even gets resolved in the episode either. Patchy tries to find SpongeBob, thinks he's about to meet him, but then it turns out it was all just a dream. Oh, Mister, are you okay? SpongeBob? No, it's just me, the guy in the penny. Patchy's one the guy in the penny. SpongeBob is making him delusional, and this is by no means the last time Patchy will hallucinate meeting SpongeBob. In Atlantis Square Pantis, Patchy gets lost in the desert and once again hallucinates SpongeBob. Uh -oh. Why is he so obsessed with him? I hope Alex touches on this. Oh my god. But then in SpongeBob's big birthday blowout, it yeah. seems like he finally really does meet SpongeBob. Whoa. From your biggest fan. Huh? I have a fan? Ah, surprise! He chop off his head or something? Okay. This is definitely another hallucination. It's right after he crashed into an island, and he's just a severed head for some reason. And he oh yeah, water. that makes yeah, sense. I'm gonna say that this is a hallucination. Makes There's sense. Another alleged meeting in SpongeBob's Road to Christmas special, but this time Patchy's fully. Whoa, I've never seen this one. Pretty skeptical about this one too. Weird. I'm gonna 
come back to this one. Yeah. Keep it in mind because it's going to be very important later on. Oh, okay. As much as Patchy worships SpongeBob and wants to meet him, he never will. And you don't have to take my word for it either. In a 2009 WonderCon panel with some of the actors and creators of SpongeBob, they talk about the rules they have for writing the show, yeah. including the fact that Patchy can never meet SpongeBob. His character is, has evolved into this pirate that's obsessed with SpongeBob. Well, they can never meet, right? Well, they, they can never Why? Meet. Why can't they meet though? Patchy to be an obsessed fan who would never meet his idol. He will spend the rest of his life devoted to SpongeBob, but no matter how I uh, never even knew that. Never reach Bikini Bottom and he will never meet SpongeBob. And unfortunately, that is the tragic story of Patchy the Pirate. No, it ain't. You got the Flying but Dutchman. If all of that's true, come on. I just have one lingering question. Talk to me, Alex. In the dumpster behind the Krusty Krab. Talk to me. Message that reads Patchy was Oh. Yo. Uh, and he does a nice little intermission. Goes back to his film that ties in Alex Bell, man. A1 with it. And he got the SpongeBob Band Aids. I'm about to say, we didn't talk about the Flying Dutchman. Hey, man, keep doing this. Keep tying in your film talent in between these theories. These people need to appreciate what you can do, man. Because you draw me into the Spongebob theory and your your personal story that you got going on here. So, whatever that thing did to your neck, I take it you're hallucinating now. My boy acting like... My boy hallucinating like he on mushrooms. What, he about to make a sandwich? What, he about to... Oh, my boy had the munchies. Whoo, boy had the munchies. Uh, uh, Alex, did you really waste all that food just to make this scene, my boy? Because you didn't have to do all that, player. You didn't have to do all that. Where'd you get that meat at? I've never seen meat poorly labeled before. I know this man is not eating raw meat. My man is eating raw meat. Origin of the Flying Dutchman. I hope you. I hope that wasn't from me. Later, but first, we have to talk about the mysterious origins of the Flying Dutchman. Right. The Flying Dutchman is the legendary ghost pirate that haunts Bikini Bottom. Yeah. In a pirate ship, the Flying Dutchman descends on Bikini Bottom. The first time we hear about the Flying Dutchman is in the episode Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, when SpongeBob finds a comic book about his origins. It's the origin of the Flying Dutchman. It says okay. that he died. Disrespectful. Now, I've always been a little skeptical about this origin, not just because it's claiming they put an actual human corpse up as display in a kid's store, but right. the Flying Dutchman himself contradicts it. Hmm, it's a little torn. Of course, it was the shirt I was buried in. He was never uh, oh. This origin can't be true. Yeah. Who is the Flying Dutchman? Right, well, right. When I rewatched all the episodes with the Flying Dutchman, I kept noticing that he seems to have some kind of fixation with Spongebob in particular. In yeah. Hide, he dropped his anchor on Spongebob's home, which leads to him having to briefly join the Dutchman's crew. Then, in Born Again Crabs, he's about to take Mr. Krabs' soul, but then immediately changes his mind when Spongebob offers his soul instead. Yeah. Even in the Camp Coral prequel show, I've never he seen this. Spongebob as a kid. But strangest of all, in Ghost Host, the Dutchman's ship gets destroyed, and out of all the places in Bikini Bottom, SpongeBob's stay, house. He decides to stay. Yeah. SpongeBob. I remember that. My location where I'll be staying. This is a residence. Residence. 
And look at the way he mischievously smiles when he sees SpongeBob. It feels like it's just personal for him. Yeah, like he knows him. Yeah. The episode Ghost Toast is actually the first time we get a bit more depth for the Flying Dutchman's character. At first, he spends all of his time torturing SpongeBob, but eventually, he just wants to stay and hang out with him. Yeah. Maybe stay with a friend for a while. Just for a little while longer. Even though his ship's already been repaired for three months. Actually, I have a Really? My ship's been done for three months now. It feels like the Dutchman has some kind of vendetta against SpongeBob specifically. But right. Also, deep down, he's just lonely and wants to be SpongeBob's friend. Right. Does that remind you of anyone? Show do. Who's desperate to be SpongeBob's Show friend, does. But also has a deep resentment towards him. Okay, but there's like a bunch of reasons why the Flying Dutchman couldn't be the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. Really? For starters, they look totally different, right? Nah, Alex. You about to tie this in, my boy. He doesn't have the iconic hook and eye patch like Patchy does. This is the point where I was about to give up and scrap this theory, but then I decided to rewatch the season one episode Art. Yeah. It's a board game called The Flying Dutchman's Treasure that's actually based on the Flying Dutchman's real map. The Flying Dutchman. About to say, you about to tie this in, my boy. Real treasure map. And then I noticed something. What's One up? Of the game cards actually shows a picture of the Flying Dutchman. I mean, look, he clearly has the same nose and face as the, the hat. This looks like a picture the of hat still alive and had a darker black beard. The hat. Yes. Yup. 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 The exact same hat Patchy the pirate wears. Ooh. But he still doesn't have the eye patch and the hook in it, right? Nah, you go. You gonna show us? Here's the thing. Neither does Patchy. Patchy's hook is always switching hands. And his eye. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But he's a pirate. But the only thing that makes him a pirate is that he says he's one and dresses like one. Okay, fine. But but the shirt, the shirt is still very different. You know, the the Dutchman is all open. You could explain that too. Patchy's is more fancy with the big white puffy collar and face. Right. Well, in the Curse of Bikini Bottom, we see the Flying Dutchman's closet, and he pulls out the exact same shirt that Patchy wears. So oh. Fine, okay. Maybe Patchy the pirate and the Dutchman look the same, but that doesn't mean they're the same person. It's time we address the elephant in the room. Yeah. The flying Dutchman can't be Patchy's ghost because Patchy is alive at the same time we see the Flying Dutchman. You're going to break it, my my guy. Patchy would have to die, and then the Dutchman's ghost would show up. But they're simultaneously existing at the right. same time. Patchy even shows up during an episode all about the Flying Dutchman, and he even calls it his favorite episode. We're gonna see the favorite show, Shanghai! Ta-da! It is physically impossible for Patchy and the Dutchman to be the same person. I'ma call it right now because Patchy said he's gonna watch his favorite episode, Shanghai. I'm calling it now because it's time travel, whatever. This is what he said in the title. I feel like Patchy is from the future that somehow traveled back in the past that's why he said shanghai's his favorite episode because he he's already lived it he's already seen it whatever the case is i feel like patchy's from the future that's traveled back i don't know if that makes sense because then if he traveled back in the past how can he be dead i don't know I, that look that's what i'm going with all right i'm sorry I, i'm calling it right now i feel like patchy is from the future or is it things are about to get stranger right after this commercial break Man, crazy. <clears throat> but, um, let's move on. Alex, man, you got the whole cast. You got everybody at your school helping you with this, man. Hey, Victoria. Uh, I tried to work things out with the muse, like you said, and then I'm pretty sure it, like, bit me or something, and now I'm, like, feeling really weird and craving raw meat. Uh, could you just call me back, please? I'm starting to freak out a little bit. She knows. She knows something, because it happened to her. Ain't no way in hell it just up and left. She still has her muse, I, I bet you. She way she acting way too cool about this. Alex, get your phone, dog. Victoria, where have you been? I've been trying to call you all day. Hey, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Alex, my boy. Um uh, some of your some of your your lines be killing me, dog. That that right there. Victoria! I've been trying to call you all day! Oh, <laughs> I was messing with you, man. I, I I love it. I am at work. Okay, so like the 
Lemieux like bit me, I think, and now I'm like craving raw meat and Yeah, I know, I got your messages. Just calm down. This is a good thing. How is this a good thing? Meat is almost over. Cause you was eating raw meat? Okay. So here's what I need you to do. What if she's the muse? Now he has me like thinking like about his personal story and then the, the damn theory. all the episodes with the Flying Dutchman, I noticed something strange. What's up? In the season 7 episode, The Curse of Bleeding <clears throat> Bottom, the Dutchman gets a girlfriend Whoa. who wants to get married. She wants to marry me! I ain't the Marion type! But the Dutchman not being the Marion type isn't entirely true. Back in season 3 during Ghost Hoax, right. we see that the Dutchman was once married. Is that a wedding ring? Oh, this holds nothing. All right, he took it off real quick. You know, this just seems like a small continuity error between seasons. No surprise for SpongeBob. Right. In the season six special, SpongeBob versus the Big One, there's an even stranger moment like this. The Flying Dutchman bumps into Mr. Krabs and says this to him. Ah, it's a Flying Dutchman! Ah, it's some guy I've never seen before! He says he's never met Mr. Krabs before, but there are two whole episodes from previous seasons dedicated to the Dutchman. Yeah. Mr. Krabs' soul for being too greedy. Yeah. The first name basis. Eugene Krabs. Yep. It's some guy I've never seen before. All right, so another weird instance. So. Dutchman, but I'm still not convinced that it's not just lazy writing. The, but back in the Dutchman has to be from the past, then. cannot be written off as another continuity error. SpongeBob and Patrick accidentally shave off the Dutchman's beard, and the Dutchman claims the beard won't grow back for another thousand years. Your beard will just grow back. So. Nothing of my facial hair. It'll take a thousand years for my beard to grow back. But by the end of the episode, we cut to several months later, and his beard is back. The curse will wear off when my beard grows back. So is the Dutchman from the future, it's not like or Patchy? This several months later is in the same episode where the Dutchman says the beard takes a thousand years to grow back. It'll take a thousand years for my beard to grow back. Several months later. Why the fuck would they include this? <laughs> if they were the damn, Alex. Later in the same goddamn episode. Alex, Even calm down, my boy. Several months later, twice, as if they're trying to make you realize how inconsistent it is. Several months later. Well, here we are several months later. So, what does any of this mean? Why are the writers of SpongeBob intentionally making the Flying Dutchman as inconsistent as possible? Well, the only way that this makes sense to me oh, come on. is if we're seeing the Flying Dutchman non-chronologically. And by that I mean <gasps> the Flying Dutchman is time traveling. Just, just bear with me for a second. Uh, I'm already with you, my boy. Only several months have passed, but for the Dutchman, it actually was a thousand years later. The Dutchman didn't recognize Mr. Krabs in season six because for him, this is the first time they've met. And from his perspective, the episodes where he tries to take Mr. Krabs' soul haven't happened yet. The Dutchman's not the marrying type in season seven, but he probably actually does end up getting married to the giant monster. And that's why we see him with a ring in season four, because the past is the flipped it. Flying Dutchman. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, let's, uh, Wait. let's calm down for a second. He said what? And that's why we see him with a ring in season four. Because the past is the future for the Flying Dutchman. Whoa, 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 whoa. The past okay, is the okay, future. Let's, uh, let's calm down for a second there, Alex. This time travel idea does fix a lot of problems with the Dutchman's continuity, but claiming a character has time travel powers is a major leap. I right. Don't get me wrong, the Flying Dutchman is a very powerful ghost. He can teleport, he can shape shift, he can grant wishes, but we've never seen him manipulate time. You get three wishes. Wishes? Yeah, you can. I wish we had known that earlier. Okay, you got two wishes left. Huh. Okay, so the Dutchman's time traveling. And you know what this means? Yeah. The Dutchman could absolutely be the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. And I'm gonna prove it. <laughs> Alex, you're getting so much better with these, my boy. And then we're about to see what's going on with this right here. Because I want to know what's going to happen. I feel like she's the muse. Because, oh, I like that. You put the little makeup around your eyes to make it show that you was super tired, like you ain't got no sleep. I like that. Oh, hey, Alex. What's up? Hey, Wes. Uh, sorry for just... Ooh, you know, looking like real tired, uh, too. I was actually wondering maybe if you want to watch my new SpongeBob theory, maybe give me some feedback. Dude, yeah, absolutely. I love his videos. Come on in, man. 
So you want to... Yeah, huh? Oh, you know. Have fun using Nightmare. Let's see, figure it out. Um, My boy Alex got friends. Uh, Helping him out with his videos, man. And, uh, cool site. Use your bathroom? Yeah, no problem. Let's just start through there. Man. Uh, I guess, enjoy. Any of y'all friends of Alex is watching me react to this? Man, y'all, y'all some dope friends for helping him out with this, man. Y'all, man. Y'all A1s. Alex, man, keep these abundance of friends y'all, you got right here helping you with these videos. Keep them, man. Keep them. Because they with you right now as you're growing. So when you get to the top, those are the friends you're going to want to keep. So you trying to see if he has a muse? What are you looking for, Alex? Okay. The death of Patchy the Pirate. Yes, this is where we want to. Okay. So if Patchy the Pirate eventually becomes the Flying Dutchman, that means at some point in the future, Patchy is going to die. Except, right. Here's the thing. What's up? I think Patchy was already dead in present day, and we have already seen his death on screen. Remember that Christmas special I told you would be important later? I've never the seen Christmas the cartoon version of him. SpongeBob Goes to Christmas, and as of recording this, it's the latest episode in the SpongeBob timeline. SpongeBob does meet Patchy in this episode, but for some reason he's fully <clears throat> animated instead of using the usual live action style. Ahoy, SpongeBob and Patrick! It's me, Patchy the Pirate! It honestly feels kind of creepy for some reason. Right. Especially since the creators themselves said that Patchy can never meet SpongeBob. Well, they can never meet. Why, though? I would have asked that. Why? Spongebob's big birthday blowout. Right. That episode ended with him being fired out of a cannon and crashing into an island. So he died? That's how he died? Immediately after that, Patchy's severed head shows up and meets Spongebob. But I already explained how this is clearly just another hallucination. And he's right. probably just going to wake up on the island disappointed that he didn't actually meet Spongebob like every other time. But what if this is something more than just a simple dream that he can wake up from. I mean, the last shot we saw of the real Patchy was him and Potty face down in the sand, struggling to get out. Yeah. What if they didn't? And this is what Patchy is hallucinating as he dies. During his hallucination, he begins singing the show's theme song with Spongebob to wrap up the episode. Oh, who's having a birthday under the tree? Me, 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 me. But as they're singing, <coughs> they briefly cut to his horrifying shot of Patchy's body with Potty's head lying on the island violently convulsing in pain. Really? It happened so quick that I didn't even process it the first time. But god damn, that is some terrifying imagery for a kid's show. Why the fuck did they show this? Is it Yo, is that really in the show? Yo, SpongeBob is on some shit. Wait. Of Patchy's body with Potty's head lying Convulsing in pain. It happened so quick that I didn't even process it the first time. But god damn, that is some terrifying imagery for a kid's show. Why the fuck did they show this? Is right. Kind of PG symbolic way to show Patchy and Potty suffocating to death in the sand? Holy shit. Okay. So let's say Patchy and Potty, the hosts of the SpongeBob SquarePants television show, are dead. What happens now? Yeah. Well, the show must go on. Right. The SpongeBob SquarePants television show has to continue <clears throat> without him, but they need a new host to replace Patchy. Except, are they really gonna tell their young audience that their beloved Patchy the Pirate and Potty the Parrot are dead? They animate them. They're gonna replace them with animated actors. And they're using actors. <laughs> Hey, that's showbiz for you. But what happened to the real Patchy? Yeah, yeah, come on. He became a ghost and could finally meet his idol SpongeBob. Except when he goes to Bikini Bottom, guess what he sees? SpongeBob and all of his friends partying without him. 
Apache dedicated hmm. his entire life to SpongeBob. He even died for him, and SpongeBob never even knew Patchy existed. And that resentment that's been building up inside of Patchy for all of these years finally explodes. And this is how Patchy the Pirate becomes the Flying Dutchman. Patchy is done pretending to be a pirate Yo. in his fake costumes. He gets a new look, a new identity, and now he can finally live out the fantasy of being a real pirate. The Flying that Dutchman. That they said was based on a real map from the Flying Dutchman? Based on a real treasure map. We never really did see the map that it was based on, or did we? Remember when Patchy was looking for the lost SpongeBob episode? He used this map to find it. Now, at first, I thought these two maps didn't look all that similar, but the more I looked at it, yeah, they do. Same red X in the middle. Yep. The compass, the palm tree, a turtle, a fish. But most importantly, they both have the forked tree. Happily to the forked tree. Look for the deacon's goose through the fork in the old tree. That is a very specific detail. You would not just see that on any random map. Right. The Flying Dutchman based his map off of the one from his past. So he's become the Flying Dutchman now, and his main target for haunting is, of course, the one who ignored him his entire life, SpongeBob SquarePants. Mm -hmm. But how did Patchy become such a powerful ghost who can even manipulate time itself? Yeah. Well, there's actually an episode in season twelve. Really? That gives us a pretty clear understanding of how ghost powers work. It basically just takes time and effort to grow your powers. Patchy's already given SpongeBob 20 years of dedication. Might as well go a little further with it as the Dutchman. Patchy travels back in time to visit all of his favorite, most cherished SpongeBob episodes, including his favorite episode, Shanghai. Yeah. We're gonna see the favorite show, Shanghai. Except now, that's the past. The Patchy. He's the one in control, and he's gonna make SpongeBob pay for everything. Then we get to the episode Ghost Coast. Patchy initially moves in with SpongeBob to torture him, but as much as he tries to deny it, deep down he's still that devoted fanboy who mm -hmm. just wants SpongeBob to be his friend. As much as he wants to pretend to be the Dutchman, deep down Patchy is still here. And that is why, if you go to the Krusty Krab after closing and you go out the back to the dumpster, you can still read the words Patchy was, was here. here. Yes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the time traveling ghost pirate theory. Thank you very much. Oh shit, what about Potty? He died with Patchy too, right? What, what the hell you all yeah, forgot about that damn bird. Uh, I, I can figure this out. Just give me a second. Let me just quickly rewatch. I was ready to go ahead and get the clapping. Gotta watch the spinoffs too. Okay, let me see. You're gonna find him somewhere. I wonder what parrot tastes Yo! <laughs> hey! Hey, that was good. I like how you threw that in. The mother ate him! <laughs> that was good, man. Good job on that. Wait, so he watched the whole 35 minutes of that theory and realized that Alex hasn't came back yet? I finished the theory. Pretty good stuff, man. It's great you stuff. There? It's fantastic stuff. The door is open. I can see it halfway open right there. Go ahead and touch it. Oh, he's not in there. Oh, 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 oh. Such a shocker. Alex. Alex. You're a little too calm for your friend to be missing, my boy. Oh, Lord. Alex? I shut the door right there. In my garage. No, it ain't. No, hell no. F that. Why are you in my garage? Why would everything be okay? Because you in my garage in the dark. That's why. And you walking up on me? What's up, man? What's up, Alex? What's up? Nah, see, you, you can't get that close to me. What, what, you want to throw these hands? Come here to show you a video. <gasps> He's gonna feed him. He's gonna feed him to the muse. To help you. Is 
Eat him. Yeah, I thought he was about to feed him. You being too cool, uh, hey, um, sorry about Wesley Wilson, that. whatever your name is, you get the hell out of my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jazz out. Yeah, no, get your ass out. You, you on something, my boy? I would have walked him out. I'm sorry. He gonna feed him. He gonna feed him to the to the the muse. I'm tired. Oh, that's disgusting. You'll feel better soon. No, because you just know, right? I don't know how to feel about what I did. I don't get it, but you did the right thing. And soon you won't have to worry about your muse at all. What do you do? Alex, what did you do? He gonna get eight. I'm running. As soon as I see, I hear a bottle. I'm out. He's just waiting for it to stroll up to his foot. See, this that. I'm not even going to say it, but. That's that stuff I'm talking about. Certain type of people just be looking for trouble. Thanks again for you. Could have been me. Talking you through all this. Um, glad I don't have to deal with it on my own anymore. Yeah, I mean, I get how weird it all is. Alex, you ain't asking enough questions. You need to ask her how she know all this. Uh, light bulb, light bulb. How you know? Yeah. The risk of giving someone else a muse too, right? Would you give it to him? Give me my muse. You needed help. It worked, didn't it? Plot twist. You met Victoria. What? Oh, hell no. Nah. I would have. Nah. No, I would have been all on her helmet. Like, how dare you give me a monster that ate my kitty cat? Oh, she still got it. Yo, Alex, my guy. Alex, my man. An amazing job, dude. Like, when you start incorporating your films, your, your editing uh, storyline in the middle of these SpongeBob theories. That's when now that, that's when this thing really took off, my guy. Cause, like I said, I don't give a damn what anybody else is saying. And if if, one, if you're one of those people that says he needs to stop doing that and be strictly SpongeBob, you you need to go somewhere and just just I'm. <laughs> Ooh, I can't say what I want to say on the channel, but boy. You need to go find your own business and leave this man alone. Alex Bell is doing his thing. Keep incorporating these side stories in these SpongeBob theories, man. Because now I'm tied in to the side story. So she didn't get rid of her muse. Apparently. Or is that the same muse? I don't know. I want to know now. What's going to happen? What happened to your, to the friend that had to clean up the throw up? Did he get his own muse? What was in the bottle? I'm excited. I want to know, man. I can't wait for you to release the next episode, man. Seriously. For those of you, if you made it this far, look, just hit the subscribe button. It helps me out greatly. Like it, share it with somebody, and let me know what other reactions you think I should do down in the comment section below. All right? So until next time, guys, take care of yourself, and I'm going to see you in the next video.